Hello. Today, I'm reading from Encyclopedia Brown, Show Us the Way. <clears throat> it's written by Donald Sobel. This story is The Case of the Girl Shortstop. Through the doorway of the Brown Detective Agency walked a girl with short blonde hair and an angry face. Boys are rat things, she said. Nonsense, objected Sally. Some boys are very nice. Not if they play baseball, said the girl. She tossed a quarter into the air, caught it behind her back, and slapped it on the gasoline can. I've come all the way from Glen City to hire you. I want you to find out who learned I'm a girl. Huh? said Sally. Suddenly, he wished he had gone fishing. The girl explained. Her name was Edwina Silverstein, and she was nine. She lived in Glen City. She'd been the shortstop on an all-boy midget baseball team until last night. I joined up as Ed Silverstein, said Edwina. My hair is shorter than most of the boys. In uniform and sunglasses, nobody could tell I was a girl. But somebody did, remarked the encyclopedia. One of my teammates followed me home after the game yesterday, said Edwina. I saw him peeping through the window after I put on a dress. And the dress put you off the team, but fast, said Seth. Two hours later, Coach Pardee telephoned, said Edwina. He said he was sorry, but I couldn't play. Girls are against the rules. How come you didn't recognize the peeper? asked the encyclopedia. It was too dark, replied Edwina. Besides, he had on his baseball uniform and sunglasses. All the players wear uniforms and sunglasses. It's hard to tell them apart. Don't you even have a tiny clue? pleaded Sally. Only this, said Edwina. She took a pair of sunglasses from her pocket. The boy tripped and fell near our fence when I chased him, she said. Sunglasses went flying. He was in too much of a hurry to pick them up. Encyclopedia examined the sunglasses. The piece of frame that hooked over the right ear was bent outward slightly. It must have got bent when the boy fell, said Sally. There are no marks or scratches, Encyclopedia pointed out, so the frame was bent before he fell down. We ought to be at the next game Edwina's team plays, said Sally. The boy without sunglasses is our man. Encyclopedia shook his head. You can buy these sunglasses in any drugstore. The guilty boy will have bought a new pair before the next game. He returned the sunglasses to Edwina. Still, it wouldn't hurt to watch the game, he added. So the following Friday, the two detectives rode the bus to Glen City. Edwina met them at the station and took them to the ball field. I asked Coach Pardee what boy turned me in, and she said, he won't tell. Men are all the same, grumbled Sally. They protect each other. They're afraid of what women can do if they get a chance. The children filed seats in the stands as Edwina's team, the Bulldogs, finished batting in first first inning. Sally pointed excitedly. There's a boy without sunglasses. He's the catcher, said Edwina. He never wears sunglasses. He wears a face mask. Pooh, said Sally, disappointed. For a second it looked like an easy case. <coughs> first batter up for the other team, the Hawks, drove the ball through the shortstop's leg. Tough one, Bob, hollered Edwina. She lowered her voice and said, I feel sorry for Bob. He was a team captain and regular shortstop last year, but he was moved to left field when I beat him out. I guess he's a little rusty. <clears throat> he's jealous is what he is, snapped Sally. Bob's our man, Encyclopedia. He spied on Edwina because he wanted his old position back. Before Encyclopedia could reply, the next hawk batter had knocked the ball for a home run. Come on, Warren, Edwina shouted at the pitcher. You'll get him. Warren's lack of control for the rest of the inning was perfect. He never missed hitting a bat, except when he hit an arm or a leg. Six runs were scored. <coughs> the Bulldogs should put in another pitcher, Encyclopedia said. Between aside, after Warren, our pitchers get worse. The Bulldogs need worse pitchers, like General Custer needed more Indians, said Sally. Don't be too hard on Warren, said Edwina. He warmed the bench till our two 
best pitchers were hurt last week. Coach Pardee made him a pitcher because he's the only left-hander on the team. She pointed to two boys sitting on the Bulldogs bench. They were dressed in street clothes. One boy had his right arm in a sling. The other boy had his right foot in a cast. Both wore sunglasses. Dave broke his foot on the way home after pitching our last game, said the dean. Bill sprained his arm rolling out of bed the next morning. They could be lying, said Sally. Either boy could have hurt himself falling by Edwina's fence. Gosh, encyclopedia, I can't tell who's guilty. I can, replied the boy detective. The guilty boy is... Who? Who? <clears throat> well... Okay... Two pitchers are hurt. Could have been one of them. One is right arm in a sling. The other is right foot in a cast. Both had sunglasses. The catcher didn't have sunglasses. Bob had sunglasses, but he missed the ball right through his legs and he Warren is not a very good pitcher. So were there any clues about fine. Friend that hooked over the right ear was bent outward. And that was before he fell down. Hmm. No. No. His arm. Bill. What do you think? The clue is in there someplace. Obscure. I have an idea that it. I don't know who. Let's see. It's Warren, the pitcher. He's the only left-hander on the team. Sunglasses that he found were not scratched, yet the earpiece on the right side was bent outward. Thus, Encyclopedia knew the wearer was left-handed. It used his left hand to pull off the glasses, causing the right earpiece to become bent outward as it pushed against his head. If the wearer used his right hand, the left earpiece would have been bent outward. So the boy who didn't want a girl on the team was a lefty. Warren was the only lefty on the team, remember? When seen after the game, Warren had a bloody nose. He confessed, Edwina announced sweetly. 